Well, if you are on a Bowden setup, you might have problems with stringing and you might have problems with your seams. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, two things that we can do, one in Cura and one on the machine itself to uh, try and get the best result with our seams that we possibly can. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, create a design in Fusion 360 that we can use for our testing. Now, this is going to be kind of interesting, but it's something I've not done before for my tests. Um, we're going to stack a design on top of itself, so we'll go through that in Cura as well. All right, so we're in Cura. The first step we need to do, obviously, is just bring our part in. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this uh, set to the build plate the way that we want it, orientation that we want. One setting you have to adjust under Printer before you can go ahead and do this under General. See where it says automatically drop models to build plate. You have to turn that off, otherwise it's gonna try and bring all your models all the time to the build plate. We don't wanna do that in this case. Now it's probably worth mentioning, uh, the reason I'm doing stack samples in this way is, uh, well, with two reasons. One, I haven't done it before. And the other reason is because, now let's say I'm gonna do five samples total in a stack method, that's 25 samples that are individual and you're going to have a lot of samples thrown all over your desk to try and tell apart. So rather than doing it that way, stacking them vertically helps to make it easier to identify which ones were printed at which time with which settings as well. Now I think everybody is pretty familiar with viewing in this way. So you've turned everything on, all of the layers are turned on and you can see all of my seams are relatively well aligned. I have the seam both on the inside and on the, on the outside as well. It does seem to jump back and forth a little bit. Okay, so that's where we are. Now one other interesting way of checking seams is to uh, turn everything else off but travel moves. This is good for analyzing. If you have a problem, you can uh, simply turn this on and, or leave this on rather and you can analyze where the problem might be coming from. Uh, in addition to that, if you want to further check, you can simply run the simulation right here. You see what it's doing. So here we can select one. These are the settings and we want to type in seam. So all to do with seam, we're going to turn it on. We're going to do that for all of these. I've settled on five uh, samples. So from the bottom up, the, the bottom one, I'm going user specified, back left, and um, you know dimension that I've chosen, X and Y, and then hide the seam. A second from the bottom, user specified, back right, and expose the seam. The third from the bottom, I'm selecting random and hide seam. Fourth from the bottom, I'm selecting shortest and hide seam. And the very top, sharpest corner and hide seam. Now, cylinder isn't a great example because it doesn't have any defined position uh, that would be best for a seam. But um, on any other part, you should have a corner or an edge or a bottom that you can identify. And you can simply just choose the X and Y position that is closest to that edge or the closest to that corner and that's where the seam should appear. Now it seems to me that black is the, the worst for showing the seams. Now also, I'm gonna be printing with no brim, and I'm printing on the nano bed adhesive, which is something I've, I'm testing. So that takes care of the settings in Cura for the most part. Let's move on to the physical changes we wanna to make to the Ender 3. So the idea for this came from a viewer. Uh, they suggested that the Bowden tube itself is too long and uh, it's about 14 inches on this machine. So they said that um, you are able to remove about four inches or so. Now I'm gonna remove a little bit less than four just because I wanna be on the safe side. There is some tolerance within the Bowden tube itself to allow the filament to pass through without getting hung up. And because of that tolerance and the retractions and the forcing of filament through the back and forth, that it isn't as responsive as a direct drive, for example. If you buy a PTFE tube, it comes with a cutter. I don't have a, that cutter, so I'm just gonna use an X-Acto knife, and I'll just make sure that the outside and inside are cleaned up nicely. Now I have removed 75 millimeters from the length of this tube, 
and the coupler doesn't seem to be usable again it just seems to be jammed on there so I don't know why but my under 3 came with an extra adapter so I'm just going to go ahead and use that one here just throwing a quick test in here the length of the Bowden tube seems to work pretty well with both of the extremes on the x-axis now that we've shortened the Bowden tube the printer should be a little bit more responsive so I'd like to adjust the retraction distance a little bit and I'll do a couple of test prints I'm going to do four millimeter retraction distance starting at 5.5 for my normal prints and then I switch to 4.5 for the next prints The test samples are complete, we just need to compare them. Now having a look under 4K video and as well I used a magnifying glass, there really isn't anything uh, that I can see that's definitively different, uh, which is a little bit of a letdown. Uh, but these samples are great benchmarks and I think we'll be using them to address the zits and blobs in a few follow-up videos. As far as my personal favorite seam, using the Ender 3 with the Bowden setup, I would have to go with the first level, which is hide seam with a user-defined position. This uh, provides a really professional look in my opinion. So one interesting thing that came out of this video while I was making it and uh, experimenting in Cura, I found a feature called coasting. And uh, if you want to get a visual on your model of how the seams will look before you generate um, or whatever, uh, 3D print it, you can turn coasting on and slice and this is going to give you exactly where the seams will be in a very visual way much better than referencing that blue travel line so what is your favorite seam setting and which parameters work the best for your Bowden setup please let us know in the comments section below i hope you enjoyed the video found it helpful if you did make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you like the video as well take care everybody we'll see you on the next one